Today's 4 Deep Sports Talk show is supported by PTU Clinic. Visit ptuclinic.com. Adria's Restaurant and Banquet Facility of East Bridgewater. For more information, their website is adriasrestaurant.net. And the Boston Athletic Academy at bostonathleticacademy.org. Head coach, all rep Middleborough boys basketball, Joe Posey. And I only had to say it three times, Joe, to finally get your last it's name right. Right, And I wanted to thank you for taking the time. And uh, I know you had some plans and you took off early. And, you know, and being Memorial Day weekend, you probably have family plans later. And we just wanted to, again, thank you for uh, coming in and letting us, letting us be the first ones to have a chance to get to know who you are. And so with that being said, I was hoping you could just run down a little bit about your history, you know, what high school you went to, your sporting career, and stuff like that. So people who don't know you. We'll get a chance to know who you are. Right. Uh, of course. Uh, first, uh, thanks, thanks for having me in. Um, Absolutely. So, uh, born and raised in Middleborough. Uh, still currently living in Middleborough. Um, I played basketball uh, in high school. Uh, I graduated in 2008. Um, after college, uh, or after high school, I went to Nichols College. Um, I majored in accounting. Um, I didn't play basketball there. I kind of just focused more on uh, academics uh, at the time. Um, the past four years, I've worked at Middleborough High School um, in the Futures program. It's an alternative high school uh, in in the high school. Um, I've coached cross country. Currently, I'm coaching freshman baseball. And for the past four years, I've served as the JV girls basketball coach, coaching with uh, Coach Jeff Powers. Um, it's been a, a privilege uh, getting to go back to the school that that I that I went to, uh, coaching sports there. So it's it's been. Really, like a, like a dream come true. Uh, very lo- looking forward to the job opportunity to coach the boys team, uh, team that I played for. Uh, c- I can't wait to get going. Yeah, coach, you said that you majored in accounting, right? Like that was yes. what you did in college. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to ask you, what really made you realize you wanted to actually go into coaching instead of just go following the accounting career? Um. So fresh out of uh, college, um, it was kind of tough getting a job uh, in the accounting industry at the time. Uh, so I, one of my friends, got me a job working at uh, Road Responsibility in Marshfield um, and once I started doing that I just got the love for like giving back and just helping people out um, when I switched over to the high school um, I got back into helping helping a kid run cross country and then uh, coach Powers kind of reached out to me he's like hey would you like coaching the girls basketball team um, I'm super competitive so just coaching that kind of just fed that that need to be competitive um, and just helping kids out in general so Accounting, for me, I, I'm a busy body, sitting behind a desk. I quickly realized that probably wasn't going to be the best for me. So just constantly doing things, helping kids out, uh, just giving back to the community is, is what I found that, that I love to do the most. Yeah, nice. I'm happy you mentioned the giving back aspect of that because coaching is really one of the most selfless things that you can be doing. You're training other kids to get better right. at their craft. You're not really focusing on yourself. If the team wins, the kids get the credit. It's not really going to be the coach that gets right. all the credit. Right. So that is impressive, of course, that you're doing that. Right, and it's not always just not – teach them things to do in sports it's it's lifelong lessons that, that we're really trying to do here yeah exactly some people when they point back to the biggest figures in their life a lot of them are coaches because they'll actually train them for guys at least i know a lot of time it's how to actually be like a man and how to be that person that you need to be to actually right. succeed in the world and that's what the coach is for that's great to say right but yeah that so coach i want to ask you you went from coaching jv basketball for girls now you're going to be coaching varsity boys. How do you think that transition should be for you going from those two different kind of sectors of the same sport? Uh, I, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a different, different speed of the game. Um, kind of got to prove to the boys that I'm coming from coaching girls, but it, it is basketball. Um, just maybe a, l- a little bit quicker, but I I'm, can't wait to get to show them that I am committed to the, to the team. I, I know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to have their back. Uh, can't wait to get to know all the kids. I know most of them already, but kind of show them that I have the, their best interests out for them. Um, and then th- just getting going from there, um, establishing the ex- expectations that I'm going to have for them um, is going to be key. Um, so I, I can't wait to get started, but I, I believe that I am ready for that jump to make. Yeah, 100%. I believe so too. But I think one thing that people mess up a lot of the time, they view girls basketball and boys basketball, two separate, completely different things. Right. But they're really similar when right. you actually look at I ended up going to more girls basketball games at my school than boys basketball games this year. We had a couple D1 commits and stuff like that. And seeing them play, they can go so much faster at certain points. They're playing the exact same game. Right. It's not like it's two different sectors at right. all. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. In the past four years, we've had very good uh, basketball teams at, at Middleborough. We made the tournament two of the past three years outside of the COVID year. We were battling for the league championship. Um, but, but like you said, um, girls, they're, they're just as capable as playing just as well basketball as, as the boys. Um, so just kind of making that, that transition, it's just going to be now it's I'm um, the, the head one. Like you said, if we win, we lose. If we win, we, the, the boys did a great job. If we lose, so it's going to be all eyes on, on me, uh, seeing, seeing what we can fix and, and seeing what, where we can go from there. Oh, yeah. You, you got the bullet. You got the bullseye oh, on yeah. you now. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, did you I'm, see, I'm ready for it. You're ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that a boy. Do you have, uh, did you see any of the boys' games? Uh, yep. Um, anytime we, if we had a practice, uh, oh, right, and then right. we, I'd, I'd go watch their games. Um, I work at the high school, so I, I have like access to the community TV television. I would watch all their, their, their games back, especially when the, um, position opened, I, I made sure I went back and, and watched like all their games. Um, kind of just to see who they are as players on the court. Um, so yeah, I've seen probably 15 other games. This, all right, this so you're well year. schooled and you've seen yes. enough. Yes. How many seniors did you lose? Uh, I believe we lost eight. Yikes. Eight, eight kids. Yep. Um, we have five returning players from varsity. Um, and I, I, I think is the, the right five. Um, they're, they're, they're great basketball players, but they're even better kids off the court in, in the classroom. I believe they're all, all five are honor roll students. Um, so I am very lucky to have a core group of kids that are kind of going to establish that, that, that uh, program culture that, that I want. It's the right five to, to, to start off with my career for sure. Yeah, well, it's going to be nice, Coach. You have that solid five for the base of it. And right. the entire foundation is going to be built around the freshman and JV teams at your school when it combined 30 and 5 last year. Right. It's not a weak foundation no, at all no. that's building on top of this base. You're going to have a strong team next year. There's no doubts about that. Right. I, and I know the varsity went 13 and, 13 and 7. Um, obviously, expectations are high. But, but like you said, the, the JV and the, the freshman program are, are very strong. So we have kids that are going to be ready to make that jump for sure. Now, do you have a feeder system like, like uh, for example, Bridgewater, Raynham? A lot of the coaches are affiliated with the parents that run an AAU program out of Bridgewater, and right. most of them are the high school kids that are playing for them. Do you have, do you have something like that in um, Middlebury involved? We like, don't, we like don't have, like, a set AU team. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I'm going to be, con like, I want to talk to, like, the, tr the guy that runs the travel organization. Um, I want to try to set up summer summer clinics throughout the year. Um and then it's kind of like I want to be around those kids so they know who I am. I want yeah. them to look forward to being like a Middlebrough station when, when, the, when they're growing up, when they're young. Um, so establishing that, that connection with the kids early is going to be vital to something that I'm, that I'm doing. Is there more than one AAU program in Middlebrough that focuses on the, you know, that brings a lot of the Middlebrough kids or is just one based? Um, you know? It's not a, a, an AAU program. It's just like the, the travel basketball Just a travel league. basketball. Yeah. Um, and it's just the grade grade levels. Um, oh, so it's kind of like OCL football type yes, deal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I mean, right now they do have a pretty strong program, but I I want to be as the the varsity coach. It's not just I'm not the coach of varsity. It's the entire Middleball program. Yeah. From high school all the way down to third or fourth grade that I I'm invested in, and I want to be able to. If they need help with anything, I want to be there to support them. I want the kids to know who I who I am. Um, nice. Just don't want them to come to high school and just be like, "Hey, I'm Coach Posey. I want to know who they are when they're young." Right. Yeah, Coach. I'm actually happy you brought up the building yourself up as a figure in their mind when they're young. Dom can attest to this. We've had Lane Clement Holbrook, the most girls basketball wins in Massachusetts history, and before, and she goes to those summer clinics, kind of builds herself up as kind of like a Santa figure in their eye. Like you look towards them, you start gaining respect for them. Almost mystical at that point. Right. They don't even seem like they're real. And then when they play for that team, they're just so much more into the game, actually excited and compassionate about it. If right. you start doing that, I think it's going to be great for you. Yeah, your team. Um, if the kids think that you have their best interests in in heart, um, they're going to they'll run through a wall for you. Um, if you don't have that relationship, um, then it's it's going to kind of be tough to get them on board. Um, just so just being around them when when they're younger, just so they know who I am, know that I'm that I am heavily heavily invested in them. Yeah, no. that's going to be huge. Chemistry is massive for a team. Coach, I'm actually going to tell you a story real quick. I was announcing one of the lacrosse games at Fian, and I went every time before the game, I go to the opposing team and get the rosters and everything. And I went to one of the opposing teams, and their head coach <laughs> knew zero of the players' names on his own team. He had them come over and say, like, what, what's really? your last name again? Yeah, blew my <laughs> mind off. That's I could that. not believe it. And then they got blown out, like, 15-0, to zero, basically. What a great coach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I could not believe that it was real. I was looking at it, I was like, yeah, I just need the rosters. Oh, we don't really have a roster. I can write it for you, though. He writes the numbers. 
Hey, number seven, come here real quick. No, number nine, come here real quick. What, what's your name again? <laughs> like, he could not remember any of them. Oh, that's no. awful. Yeah, it's that's crazy. Awful. Yeah, oh, that's awful. cringy. <laughs> that happened to me doing a game on Taut and Access TV, but it was just the guy couldn't pronounce the name, so he, he <laughs> gave me fake names. <laughs> <laughs> so that I found out in the Globe later, it was Boston U playing Taunton U, 18U, and he gave me the fake name. So then later <laughs> in the paper, they had pictures from the Taunton uh, Boys and Girls Club. And they, like, it was some. Excuse my friend, some African French name, a Cape Verdean name, but I couldn't even pronounce. <laughs> yeah, that's John Smith. I'm like, oh, that's not John Smith. <laughs> Set up that it was just on Access TV, <laughs> not ESPN. That was false. Oh, it's too funny. Oh, what do you guys got? What do you got, Jay? Um, what would you say you're looking forward to in your new position? Since you're transitioning from one to the next, right? Um, just that opportunity to uh, coach where I grew up. Um, I know what it's like to, to, to put on that, that state from Jersey. Um, and just kind of being, the, being there for the kids, um, just being invested in them, um, giving back to, to the school, hopefully helping them become better uh, young adults. Because um, if you look at, at it, um, only like 7% of kids end up going on and playing college sports. Um, so it is just kind of like helping them become better young men. Um, and just giving back to my town is probably nice. what I'm most excited for. Yeah, no, you mentioned the 7% statistic for how many are actually going to league. 100%. It might even be less than that, honestly. Yeah, very <laughs> good chance <laughs> less than that. But there's 100% of them who are going to be growing up into young adults, so of course right. you're going to be need to train them for what's actually going to be affecting their life. That's a really good viewpoint to have as a coach, right. for sure. Then, Don, we got about 20 seconds before the next break, so we can probably fit in one more discussion real quick. Right, which, one, which, one, which one do you guys want to go next? Yeah, what would your mindset be from transitioning from an assistant coach which would be JV to a head coach um kind of touched on a little bit earlier now um I'm gonna be the head coach um whether we things are going well things are going going bad um more of the eyes are going to uh, fall on me now um before I kind of had coach powers be able to lean Take back on heat. he took the most <laughs> most of the heat um I was just in the background whether it was a session I made but he he kind of had to take the heat of, heat of things um and just kind of being the, the head of that program, um, not just the varsity team, uh, just the whole basketball, Middleborough basketball program in general. Um, I think that's going to be the biggest adjustment uh, f for me. Yeah, Coach, I think you're definitely ready to handle that. But, Dom, we are about ready for our first break. You got it, buddy. Take it away. Okay, this has been 40 Spurts Talk on 1320 AM radio at the news station, WARA. We have the Middleborough High School new varsity basketball boys head coach, Joseph Posey with us today. We'll be right back after this. Hi, this is Megan Chase of Jack Conway Real Estate. Jack Conway has been providing top quality real estate professionalism since 1956. I take personal pride to ensure that my clients are happy with the services I provide. It is my job to make sure that you are fully involved and fully informed and have all the information to make the right real estate decisions for you and your family please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to be a resource for you. I can be reached at 774-240-7707 or via email at mchase at jackconway.com. I'm always happy to assist you with your real estate needs. A popular destination, Adria boasts a breathtaking panoramic view of nature in all of its glory in each and every season. Upon visiting their 200 seat restaurant, you will see three distinctive areas. The lounge area includes their spacious 26-seat dining bar, high-top tables, and dining tables, all viewing access to seven high-definition televisions and three Kino monitors. A second area set apart from the lounge offers booths and tables to accommodate every member of the family. The third area, a few steps down and separated from the main restaurant by windows, is known as the fairway room. It is surrounded by a wall of windows offering not just a fabulous view, but a feeling of serenity and tranquility. It is a favorite spot for lunch, dinner, and functions. It is a perfect for a romantic dinner, a casual family gathering, business meeting, or any large group for that special occasion. Hello everyone, welcome back to Fort Deep Sports Talk. We are here with the Middleborough basketball coach Joe 
Shifpush. Did I pronounce it right? You got it. Oh, wow. Better than me. <laughs> right on. Um, so my next question is, what's planned for the n- next upcoming basketball season? Do you really know? Of course. Um, I mean, they're coming off a, a very good season, um, making the tournament, getting into the second round. Um, kind of this building on that su- success that uh, Coach Mike Duhart, um, kind of the past three years, um, has really brought this program up. To, to where I think it, it can be and now just kind of like continue that, that success. Um, I want to build that, that culture that we're going to be a basketball team that gets down defensively. Um, we're going to outwork you. We're going we're gonna to play some team basketball um, and just kind of continue the success that he had. Um, Interboro's always been known as like a, a, ba- a baseball town. I'm hoping to kind of even it out a little bit. Maybe we can be, be, be try a to get more people invested in basketball. Oh, yeah. um, I think we can do. I got we got the right group of kids uh, here, and then the right group of kids coming up. Um, so just kind of building on that success um, from where they are now. Just kind of to continue that forward. You know, playing out of the South Shore League and being an assistant coach. Is there a certain school you want to use as a measuring stick to see how your team progresses through the season? Um, like you said, the South Shore League. They, they it is a uh, very good league. Um, I've watched the boys' games last year. Um, I know we, we were last year we were the only team that, that beat Randolph um, in, in their season. Yeah, they um, won the so, state. So just compete with them. Um, Abington, they're, they're always a very good uh, basketball program. Um, just kind of measuring up to there. Uh, Norwell, they're, they're always pretty good, um, especially come from the girls' side. I think that was like one of the only teams uh, Coach Powers and myself had, haven't got a, a win against. So. Kind of this. I know it's a, a different program, but kind of getting a win against Norwell, I think, would be would be pretty big for me. Beat up on the Clippers, huh? Yeah. Take one from the Clippers. Um, then East Bridgewater always uh, cross town rival. Yeah, they're they're well coached. Um, every team in this league is well coached. Um, everyone's kind of has like a coach that's been there been there for a while. Um, yeah. Now I'm the new guy, so kind of got to prove myself. Um, but yeah, I. So there's no particular. You just want to go at them all and see what happens. Yeah, that's I what mean, it sounds we're, like. We're here right? to compete. We're not. New coach, we're not going backwards, we're going forward. Now, you guys Sullivan division or Tobin? Uh, we're in the larger side. So that's um, probably Sullivan, yes. maybe, yep, I think? Sullivan. I'm trying to remember. So that's a big, those are all the big schools. That's all right. the Abingtons and the, I don't, I think Mashby might, by uh, school, male and woman might be small, and they're usually they're pretty they're competitive. They're in the small league. Um, yeah, then you have U, East Bridgewater, Norwell. Edmonton just moved over last year. Rockland switched over to the Tobin League. Um Oh, Rockland switched over. East Bridgewater. Yeah, East Bridgewater. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of good so schools n- in there. Yeah, nothing's easy in, yep. in our league. Uh, kind of just all beat up on each other. Now, uh, once you get the job, do you st- do they have those conferences, do those coaches' conferences you have to go to with all the other coaches? How does that work? Do they have anything like that? Uh, I was just, I was that'll curious. be more probably beginning of the school year uh, next year. Yeah. We'll have a uh, coaches' meeting, uh, South Shore League meeting. Um, and then I'll get a chance to meet all the coaches there. Um, but that that's probably doesn't come till next year. So you're not going to get offended when you show up and like, who's a little kid? Where's no, his father, right? Because <laughs> you'll be the youngest coach there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> does, he, does he know his kids in this meeting, or you know? Hey, but maybe I can use that to my advantage. That's they, right, they, right, they, right. Yeah. That's a moment. That's a, that's a momentum builder if I ever heard one right there. So. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, coach. You're talking about how you're going to be basically the youngest coach. Wow. Okay. Turns out I had the mic not, not turned all the way up. There we go. Okay. Oh, now my I hear back. You. Yeah. My back. Which coach. one did you ha- right. didn't have turned up all the way? I did not have six turned up all the way. That's that was, you. Yeah. That is me. That okay. was exactly <laughs> what I was wondering. I, I can hear myself, but not through the headphones. Yeah. You had feedback. Yeah. Now. Now we're all good. Okay. But um. So, coach, you're talking about you're going to be the new coach in a room of the old guard, basically. Yeah. One thing about that, though, that's not a negative at all, is you don't have any battle scars. You're not going in any of those places remembering past losses or anything like that, remembering past victories, getting a little too cocky. Right. You're walking in with a fresh mindset. This year is going to be where you set the stage, really decide how the rest of your coaching career goes against those other teams, because you'll, you'll kind of be calling back to this first experience, I feel like, every time you play them, I right. have a chance. Right, uh, and, and to build up on your point, this, we haven't played a game as, yep. as coach of uh, Middleborough Boys Basketball yet, so kind of that, that – I have the ability to look back at, at that, their film from the past year or two, kind of see how they play. Yeah. Um, 
right now they don't really have much to, get, to go off of. Um, right, get that fresh perspective yeah. going. That's pretty cool. So, so that's an advantage, actually, if you think about it, right? Yeah, I'm I was excited. thinking the exact same. He right. really does not have anyone who has been viewing your exact game and how you're going to come out with that team yet. So they're going to be fully shell-shocked when that team comes on the floor. It's going to be awesome to see. Uh, that, that's the plan. I hope we can right. <laughs> shock them right away. Yeah, then, Coach, you're talking about wanting to hang your hat basically on defense and playing team ball. Co or Dom, you obviously remember last year, Pembroke. Yeah, how good they did when they focused on defense, passing the ball. They got pretty deep in the playoffs, I believe. I think so, yeah. I know they didn't end up winning the whole thing, but they no. did a lot better than they were expected to yeah. before the season, and they obviously focused on defense, passing the ball, just working as a whole team. Right. If your team does that this year, they're going to be successful. Yes. That is the best way to do it. Absolutely. You can't be focusing on one star player, trying to do iso ball, just have them score the entire thing. If you're passing the ball, you're playing defense, you're putting your heart on the field or on the court technically, you're going to win the game. Right. Um, and kind of coached him with Coach Powers. He was a defensive first coach for sure. Um, so that's kind of where I get my background of wanting to be defensive first. Um, shooter staff off nights. If you can play defense, you're going to be in every single basketball game. Um, so this holding teams, what are the 50, 60, and then boys just kind of keeping them around there. Um, then you can just be, be in every game. Um, as you said, uh, you watch all the good teams. They, they move the basketball around. Um, you see the Mansfields, the Norwoods. They're, they're playing very unselfish basketball, um, just getting the defense moving, um, just playing unselfishly. That's definitely going to be something that, that I strive to, to these to the Middleborough boys. Uh, Excellent. For sure. Now, who's on your coaching staff? Who do you have for, do you know who we who have for uh, um, so, freshman JV? And so the the JV coach is going to be the return of JV coach from last year, um, Greg Greg Ulrich. Um, I, I I love that that he's going to co be coming back. Um, he kind of has that that background with the kids already. Yep. Um, they 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 like him. Um, he he knows what he's talking about. X and O's. Um, the kids the kids liked him. Um, and he he's fully committed, dedicated, from from that November to March. That's he he eats, breathes, sleeps basketball. So very very similar to me in that, that aspect. So having someone that is basketball, 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 just by my side helping me out um, is is going to be huge for me. Nice. What about now? Who's the freshman coach? Um, I have someone in the works. Um, it would be uh, he works at the high school, but until it's it's oh he doesn't know yet. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't want to throw his name out there yet. Um, All right, but, but you'll let us know. Yes, can we, of course. Can we break the story. Yes, of course. Has to come with a picture so you can make sure it's a real person. <laughs> it's not like the Cookie Monster no, or something no, like that. No, no, he's 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 real. Um, but yeah, once I get that confirmed, I'll be be sure to let you know. Now, what about the other varsity coaches helping you out? Um, so I believe Greg is going to be, the JV is going to help be the, the assistant, um, <coughs> on, at the varsity level. Nice. Um, then also I kind of just got to confirm a few things with, with, a, with another person, make sure they, they can, they can help me out. Um, it's someone that also works in the, in the high school. Um, I believe that's very important. Um, the kids see you there all day. Um, it, I think it kind of tightens them up in the, in the classroom a little bit. Just, uh, they have problems or, or just need to talk during the day. Just having two people in the building that they can that they can get to and just talk, whether it's that helps you sports, out academics, yeah. life life lessons, anything. Um, so I'm very excited to to get him on board as well. Is there a minimum requirement? I don't remember as far as how many coaches you can have on your staff in the varsity. Um, I mean, you look at at, at Mansfield. It seems like they have like seven or eight guys on, True. on, the, on That's the bench. True. Good point. Um, yeah. It's like a college program, every yeah. Yeah, so yeah. then it just it gets down to like getting those. Are they gonna volunteer volunteer their time? Because um, it is a a big commitment. It um, is. And my first year, I lo I love as much help as as I can get. Um, I don't think you can have too too many eyes looking at at the court, looking at film. Yep. Um, so I'm definitely um gonna be talking to talking to some people to get to get on board. There you go. What do you got, kid? I know you. I know you have some more questions. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to like elaborate on my sec on my second question about coaching like girls basketball and boys basketball and from what I from what I understand is like when you coach a girls basketball like when you hold a girls basketball like the actual ball it weighs like twenty eight point five pounds and compared to the boys basketball the actual ball I know it's like a lot heavier than that. Right. But I don't know how much that weighs, though. So what would you say was, like, the big difference? Like, 
transitioning from that? For 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 me, like the the basketball wise. Uh yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, practices. I'd I'd get out there, get out there with the girls, uh, shoot shoot that basketball. Um, and then when I go go back to, to playing with with my buddies, playing my friends, just kind of yeah. adjusting to getting back to that. that. Is, you know, I never even thought about was, that. That's a great tough. point you made. I never um, even thought about that. Yeah, yeah I never thought Besides of the basketball weight either. That was actually a really funny point, Casey. Switching between the two is definitely like you're trying not yeah. just over arc the ball on the second yeah, one. Yeah, and you can almost palm girls. the girls' ball. Even <laughs> I think I can palm almost a girls' basketball. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah with, which I, I had no idea. Like when, when I was a freshman in high school, like that was, it was crazy. Yeah, I right? didn't realize they weighed different. Uh, it makes a lot of sense they do. I never really put that together for some reason. And we just had like a uh, faculty versus like student basketball game. It was yeah. like the, the faculty – First, the the girls and boys basketball teams, and we we use the girls ball. And like whenever like myself or one of the boys went to shoot the, shoot a shot, shoot a three, everything just had a little bit more on it. Uh, they were more used to that, that lighter weight for sure. That's funny. Yeah, those student faculty basketball games are awesome. Oh, every so single, fun. Yeah, there's never one that's not fun to do. Like I got to uh, I got to announce one of them this year. Actually, the first time I ever like done that in my school was basketball. Oh yeah. Yeah, we that's did it live cool. just in the gym. It was pretty cool. But no, uh, having moments like that definitely connects you with those teammates right. and those members of your team, obviously. And I'm happy you mentioned the fact of having the coaches actually be in the building to talk to because that is kind of a bridge to the chemistry we talked about earlier. Right. When you can talk to your coach about whatever you want in your actual daily life, that changes it than talking about just basketball in a certain two-hour block every day. Right. And um, just talking back, to that's going to be one of the, the things I, I, I miss, uh, leaving the girls. Um, spent four years there, um, built – a lot of uh, great relationships with some of those kids. Um, still talk to talk to most of them daily. Um, nice. They'll come up during during lunch. We'll we'll chat for 20, 30 minutes. Um, they have time during their gym class. Um, they just still I have that open door policy with them. Even though I'm not going to be the, their their coach anymore, I'm I'm just not the end of our relationship. Um, and that's something that I hope I can do with the boys as well. Um, just kind of build that relationship because uh, then we, we know each other. And then they're going to want to run through that wall for you, as, as, a, as everyone would say. Yeah, I agree completely, Coach. I think one of the differences between boys and girls basketball for that aspect is you kind of see, like, boys respect their coaches a lot. Girls, they, they love their coaches. Right. Like, you can see how happy they get when their coach walks in the room. Yeah. We saw that this year with the guy, who, and it, Mike Costa, the one who won boys or girls basketball coach of the year, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, you Women. can see just how much his girls obviously love having him as a coach, actually talking to him every day. But we are approaching our second break of the show. This has been 40 Sports Talk with the new Middleborough High School boys varsity basketball head coach, Joe Saposi. I believe I pronounced that we're going to it. And we'll be right back after this. Hello, this is Manny Dill Carmen from the 2007 World Series champion Boston Red Sox. World champs again. A sports analyst for Nessa. Along with my best friend, Jose Diaz, we grew up in the city of Boston, a city that we truly love. Jose and I have always talked about giving back to the youth within our city. Therefore, we created the Boston Athletic Academy to move our passion to action. Our goal is to develop future student athletes in Boston by providing a safe location to offer educational and athletic needs. We are taking the next steps and looking forward for your support to reach our goal. Please visit the bostonathleticacademy.org for more information. Let's make a difference because success has no boundaries. Welcome back to 40 Sports Talk on 1320 AM Radio WARA. We have the Middleborough Boys Varsity Basketball Head Coach Joseph Posey with us right now. We're going to jump right back into the questions. Casey or Justin, do either of you guys want to start this off? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll do it. So this is the basic question that I always ask our every guest. So what is, who is your favorite NBA player? Um, right now, I'd have to say, uh, as a Celtics fan, Jason Tatum. Uh, even though they, they lost last night um, and he only took one shot in the fourth quarter, mm. I, uh, I hate to see that, but uh, Jason Tatum, um, he kind of gets after it offensively and uh, he'll, he'll lock it down on defense as, as well, uh, for sure. My Being a, a Celtics too. fan, yeah. i got to go with JT. 
Last night hurt though. He was doing so good. That yeah. one shot fourth quarter. Right. He shot at least. And four I mean, Jimmy Butler got to tip his tip yeah. a cap to him. He played a heck of a game. No, no. No matter how mad anyone wants to get about the refs or anything like that, Jimmy Butler almost scored fifty with yeah. a triple double. Basically, you hitting, can't. You have to accept. Getting very tough shots. Yeah. I mean, what every gonna, single what, shot. Every, what are you gonna do? Every playoffs he goes against us, he just turns out Michael Jordan. I yeah. feel like. it's every single time. I'll do spinaways. That one shot. He always where, has that, that that one game. Yeah, yeah. that one shot. Like near the end of the shot clock, out of the inbounds, that was that was a dagger for sure. Yeah, two point two around. left on the inbound shot. Then he grabs it, spins around, falls out of bounds, and hits the shot, and in the face. I know every time he has a hand in the face, does not affect him one bit. You play good defense. Someone plays better offense. What are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Tip, tip I, the cap to him. I gotta admit, I I had to shut my TV off <laughs> after <laughs> watching the, the game. Well, the half of the game, I couldn't watch it. Yeah, it got a rough at few points. It, yeah. yeah, it was frustrating to watch at times. <laughs> So what does it take to become a middle, in your opinion, or what do you, how could you describe what it takes to be a Middleborough High School varsity boys basketball player? Um, just being committed to the team. Um, if you, you sign up for, for basketball, you're there um, all the way. Um, a, a big thing f- for me um, is this kind of being ac- accountable. Um, if you make, it, make a turnover, you miss a shot, you just got to let it go. Um, this is the next play next play for me um having your teammates back um like we talked about earlier playing unselfishly um you got to tr- trust your teammates make the right play um don't don't try to do too much yourself um let the game come to you um but, but most importantly you got to be able to lock down on, on defense um if we can score t- 20 but you're giving up 22 on the other end then what are we doing uh we got to sh- shut teams down um, but then it also comes back to being a, a good student athlete. Um, student athletes first, academics first. If you're not getting the job done in the classroom, then uh, we're not we're not yeah, going to be seeing play. time seeing time on the court. Yeah. Uh, so g- got to be a g- a good good academically first, and then kind of just willing to put in hard work, giving 110 percent effort at all times. Um, we're here to get better. Um, but there will be times where we have fun because I, I get it. It is high school basketball, but when it's time to lock down, it's time to lock down. Uh, yeah, but right. there be, will be times during the year that, that we, we we do have our fun as well. Now, you mentioned Coach Powers a couple times. What was the biggest thing he instilled in you as a coach coming into this new position? Um, kind of just be, being a coach at all times. Um, as soon as you start stop coaching the kid, then, then that's when they, they, they stop believing in you. Um, whether they do something something good, something, something that they, they can work on, always – be, being in their ear, um, being supportive to them, um, just al- always, always coaching them up, um, playing defense first, um, and just kind of getting build that relationship with the kids. Because um, if if they, you don't know them as as kids outside of just being being sports, then then it's, it's they're not going to play play as hard as 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 they can for you. Now, do they have those summer leagues still? I, oh, this is years ago when my son played. They used to have it up over in Taunton. Taunton has a gym above the main gym, uh, you know, on the uh, on the field house side, I guess right. they used to call it. And they used to have the summer league. Coaches couldn't coach, but they could watch their kids play. It was like the captains were running the team for the kids. Do they still do they still have that? And are you guys in, are you guys doing that? This yes, year? Uh, we're in the the Taunton league. It actually starts June sixth, okay. uh, Monday and Wednesday nights. Uh, like you said, uh, not able to coach, but um, you can be a I'm, fan. I'm gonna be there for sure. Pull the hair out, whatever hair you yep. get left out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like that that we are in that league. Very good competition. I mean, yeah, there's playing, everybody. Playing yeah. Taunton's, the Durfies, the Darkness, Cases, yeah, the DRs, the Brocktons, teams, sometimes Tibertons yeah. in it. Teams from a team from New Hampshire. I can imagine yeah, that's so big. Very, uh, very good competition uh, for sure. And then we're also in the Whitman Hanson League. That's Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, as you can tell, I, I want want the kids in the gym with the basketballs yeah, as, as much right. as possible. You're not playing baseball. Or doing, yeah, if you're not going away to Italy, you might as well be playing right. basketball. Right. Right? So it kind of gives <laughs> a, a chance to f- get in the gym, get, get some work done. Now, when does double session start? Um, uh, probably beginning of the November, late November. You were late talking November. about practices yeah. for, for our team. Yeah, we can't start up officially – until the Monday after Thanksgiving. So your double sessions, it sounds like it's going to be based off that summer league ball that we yeah. just talked so about. Yeah, so we go Monday, Wednesday in Taunton's, Tuesday, Thursday in at uh, Whitman Hanson. 
Do you have any freshmen that come to mind? Although we really don't know because they, they're freshmen. I shouldn't say that. That's not true. But any JV kids that you think that would um, get something out of being in the faster league like like that summer league? Yeah, the, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, the the Taunton League is going to be very competitive. Um, yeah. That jump from JV to varsity, I, I would say the biggest thing is just the speed of the game is a little bit quicker. But do you have um, kids in mind that you'd like to say, oh, you, yes. de- you definitely need to go? Yes. Um, Are you going to show all the JV kids and see what they have? Because you don't want to. You don't want the kid to. I, I would think you wouldn't want the kid to lose his self esteem. He's getting burnt out because he can't keep up. At the no, same it, time, he really probably won't get anything out of it. So it's not worth him going. You right. know what I mean? Does so make, the Taunton League is going to be a little bit more competitive. Um, yeah. Because that 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 is kind of like a, a varsity team entered in that. Um, yeah. The the Tuesday and Thursday league we entered as like a um a sub varsity team. So the kids that don't oh, nice. get as much playing time as they would like on the monday and wednesdays they're going to so be those jv their, kids can they, they, see, yeah, yeah they can still get get their run on on tuesdays and thursdays and so can the sh- younger kids that are playing the Taunton league right. that right now hypothetically play jv they can go have a lot of fun in the whitman hansen right. league right and so how do you, so how are you policing that how you how, what's your mindset for for, uh, for doing that as far as who's going where um i have a, a, a guy that's going to be coaching the the, the taunt league for me um and then I want like one of the older kids um, going to the the Whitman League as Running well, kind of dis- ha- so they have that 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 leader there. That oh, so you is, can have is, a coach in the Taunton League, or like this. Um, yes, uh, I okay. can, I can't personally coach it. I yeah, someone that it won't be involved in, right. in the Middleborough program. Uh, oh, so like a vo- parent volunteering type deal, yeah, right? Something like that. Yes. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure because I remember last time, like, where are all the coaches? There's no coach here. These kids, yeah. and they, of course, the kids are getting a little carried away with their colorful metaphors. And I told my kid, you played for BR. I'm like, if you open your mouth, I swear to God, yeah, you'll never, never, ever, want that ever. But, Dad, I get I got Yeah, you know? There. Oh, I was all, I was all over them. If you ever, ever, ever drop a colorful metaphor to that, for rough trying to get ready for Yeah, but, Daddy, you know, you don't, I don't care. I promised the guy. I said you'll be taking the local Taunton bat bus to get here because I won't be driving you, or you'll walk. Uh, you know what I mean? Because that's what. Because some of them think they're all that in a bag of chips. You know, it happens. It's, right. It's insti- the competition's instilling the kid. He just doesn't know how to shut up. Yeah, if you get caught up in it. In yeah, the exactly. Expo kind of tempers get a little bit high. Yeah, uh, part of competition. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly. I guess I'm a mean father then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're good. No, d- you definitely get caught up in the emotions when you're in that type of environment. You kind of forget the ref is a actual person who has like actual emotions and stuff like that. You got obviously be nice now. Right. He's giving up his time. Well, plus being yeah, a baseball there, umpire, right? job. yeah, right. Yeah. And plus being a baseball umpire, I'm like, you know, you always say to yourself, I don't think this guy really wants to, because you always hear the jokes. Oh, there's a, there's a makeup call, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, how can you on even in basketball? How can you honestly say? Oh, that's definitely going to be out of bounds in them. You know, how can you? Right. How can you I mean, things are happening so like fast, too. Yeah, so exactly. It's, you have some, someone making a, a split second decision. I mean, right. So that's why I, I, human. I exactly make, make errors. And that's what, you know, and that's what I love about uh, officiating. But I'm, I'm saying to myself with basketball, it's so it's so fa- fast paced, especially at the varsity level. Some of these kids, like you look at them, they're ready for Division One right. or Division Three. <laughs> they're big. They're strong. They're fast. We see it in girls basketball. You, know, you started in girls basketball right. for so many years. But then again, like the official, you're just trying. I don't think no one wants a prep to get out there wear a zebra oh, shirt and embarrass themselves. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But it happens. It does happen. It just takes a blink of a eye. You lose your focus and you get back in the wrong. You get back in the wrong position. How many times have you seen it? You see the ref make a call from Foss from the other end yep. of the court, and the person, the other ref's down low, with the play down low, and he blows and he doesn't blow the whistle, but the other guy does, and you're scratching your head and you're like, "There's no way you saw that play from yeah. there. There's no way." But I mean, once <laughs> once the call's made, you can't. You're not going to get it back. Yeah, so exactly. Well, once they have those conference, right? right? Uh, that's the other question I was going to ask you, as far as the refs go. Don't you can't can you ask? Like I know in freshman football, they told us um, you can ask the refs to have a conference if you believe they got it. So I, if, I must have yelled at it like 97 times. Time for a conference. <laughs> can you get a conference? Can you get a conference? Right? And then the guy, the side, you know, there's like only three, maybe two refs in freshman football. I think you ran out all your mulligans, coach. I'm like, this oh, ain't geez. golf. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, definitely probably during timeouts, halftime, if I have a question for the refs, that's yeah, I feel that right. would be the appropriate time to approach them. Right. Um, I'm, I know I'm making a lot of sense. Yelling, so, yeah. yelling at them across the gym. Yeah. I don't think that's. Because that reflects you yeah, and the school. Gonna, yeah, exactly. You know, and you must see that all the time. You know, you, I know you probably seen all the time. All those coaches that lose their composure, yelling as the, as the plays in transition. 
I mean, the guy's not the guy's not trying to not pay attention. And not, here, here am I making up all these excuses <laughs> for these refs, the poor guys, and coach the varsity game. He had boys basketball, <laughs> but he knows. He knows. He's been around enough. Yeah, you're yelling. At, if you're on them, then they're focused on you rather than yeah, exactly. Maybe exactly. looking at the call. People don't remember that coach. Yeah, what I was going to say was I feel like a ref has never been yelled at then thought, you know, maybe I should be nicer to that guy's team. I should make a call a little bit better for him. Like, yeah. no, no ref takes it like that. Yeah, like, yeah, and he's not going to give you any more. He's just going to call what he sees. Yeah, the exactly. Rest. He's got to follow the game, right. follow the rule book that he's supposed to, 100%. Right. Right. And now he's coaching. Now he's big in the, now he's in the South Shore League. He's one of the most competitive leagues in Division two, B, 2 or 3A or whatever they are now. I forget. But, oh, my God, you get your hands cut off for you. We were cut off for you, I mean. Of course. Uh, yeah, we just made the jump up to Division Two. Yeah, uh, yeah. This past year for tournament-wise. Um, so it, it is. Uh, uh, Coach, you're ready, I can tell. Yeah. I'm very excited. Um, definitely committed. Awesome. Can't, can't wait to get going. Yeah, what's going to be nice about that, too, the div- like the Division Two talent that you're going to be going against all season, that's right. going to be getting you ready for playoffs. You're not going to be going in there and just get basically blindsided from a team that's really good. You're going to be facing that all year, right. and you're going to be ready for it. Right. Plus, he did his homework. Exactly. He's seen, he's seen yeah, all the films. Film. He's not an idiot. <laughs> he knows what he wants to do. <laughs> no, for sure, Dom. I think we are ready for our third and final break. Yeah. This has been uh, 40 Sports Talk on 1320 AM Radio, WARA in the news station. We had the Middleborough High School New Varsity Boys basketball head coach, Joseph Posey, in a day. We'll be right back after this. Welcome to Physical Therapy U. I'm Kelly Duggan, Doctor of Physical Therapy and the owner of PTU Clinic. Here at PTU, you're more than a patient and we're more than physical therapy. We offer massage, physical therapy, occupational therapy, personal training, and sport-specific performance training. We treat people and athletes of all ages and all levels of experience. Our beautiful 4,500 square foot facility located at 75 Scotland Boulevard in Bridgewater, Mass. is unlike any clinic you've seen. Our large space along with our new COVID guidelines allow us to treat you in the safest way. Your success in meeting your goals is our top priority. Whether you're recovering from a surgery or you're elevating your performance, we are the right clinic for you. Call us at 508-697-2000 or email us at ptuclinic at gmail.com. Check out our website at www.ptuclinic.com. Hello everyone and welcome back to 40 Sports Talk here at 1320 AM WARA. You can call us at 508-222-1320 if you have any questions for our guest, which is the new Middleborough boys basketball coach, Joe Posey. So I, so my next question for you is, uh, who would you say is your biggest motivation? Um, I would probably go back to um probably my dad um growing up he coached probably every every sport that I, that I played he was my my coach growing up um kind of when I got this the, this boy's job um as funny as it may sound he was like a humongous Larry Bird fan and uh he had like a whole box of memorabilia um he actually gave me like one of those pieces of, of Larry Bird uh from like the Larry Bird like retirement night so kind of him just giving me that kind of just shows like how how much me getting this job kind of meant to him so kind of I want to make sure I do this right uh I don't want to let let him down um so probably my dad uh he that's cool no that's really he cool was a coach. great coach growing up uh good role model uh just want to make him proud yeah having that personal connection in the yep. game actually changes everything that's awesome coach you're gonna be thinking about him every time you're out there in those tough moments of course. i, I want to impress my dad i might as well just put it all on the court right now right. So that's awesome to see so is it fair if we go if we start to get in in, in depth in the roster are you pretty much familiar with the, familiar, familiar with last this year your this year's this roster place, yes and what about the jv kids are you familiar with them a little bit coming yep. up yep so how many jv kids and who are they and what positions do you think they'll be helping out 
for so the squash just squad. JV specifically? Yeah, we'll start with JV. Some of the names. Give the kids some uh, kudos. We got Matt Youngquist. Um, he was probably the leading scorer of the JV team this past year. He's going to be a, a junior next year. Um, he's got that the something you can't teach. He's tall, lanky. Uh, got the the how tall is he? Wingspan, probably six two, six three. Oh, that's a big body. Um, can shoot, can <coughs> drive. Um, nice. He he plays that 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 unselfish basketball. What um, spot does he play? See him at the three. Maybe if we want to go a little small ball, throw him at the four. Oh, nice. Um, then we got Zach Iwanski, um, guard. He just gets after it defensively. He's he's going to be a, a, a pest out there, guarding guarding the ball handlers. Um, constant energy. Uh, but again, both of those those kids are, are great kids in, in the classroom, outside of outside of school, uh, multi sport athletes. Uh, so I, I see them doing doing some big things for us, that taking the the big roles left by uh, the starters from last year. Uh, a lot of minutes up for grabs. Um, I, I believe they they have a good opportunity to if they put in the work in the off season. Yep. Um, they they come ready. Um, they'll have their opportunity opportunities. Any other JV guys come to mind? Are those the two standouts off the uh, top of your head? Th- probably the th- off the top of my head. That those those are the two um, that that I see. Um, maybe Bray Roach as. Um, he was a freshman last year. He got called up later in the year. Oh, that's um, pretty impressive. Again, he's like the 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, I um, actually saw him the other day. I was like, hey, how, t- how tall are you supposed to get? Because um, I, I heard he's supposed to shoot up there a little bit, maybe oh, get to 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. Is that the deal? So um, if, he, if he grows a little bit more, he's in the weight room. Um, he could be again, a plus. That, that could be yeah. be something that, that, that we can use. Could so, you see him a bench player? Yeah, me, coming in, being being a backup, backup big. Um we play teams that that have have size um because yep. middleborough has never been blessed with the six seven the six eight kids um yeah those farm I, boys I, ain't I, that I played tough. there so <laughs> uh, i know i know how it is height yeah. wise for middleborough um so yeah if he can come in and uh play some solid defense rebound the basketball uh for sure the first two kids you mentioned could you see them being bench players or being maybe possibly being like a role player i mean honestly if i'm, I'm a new coach um I mean, I'm just going more, no it's more like roles. a fan thing. I'm asking. There's like no set roles for me. So yeah. if the kids that are going to be be in the gym in the off season, the kids that are going to be in the weight room, um, whoever comes comes ready to play day one of, of tryouts, um, yep. obviously watch them in, in summer league. Whoever the, the kids that are ready to go, um, th- those are going to be the kids the kids that I go with. Um, but like like we said, I'll I'll transition to the varsity returners. Um, we got a, a point guard coming back in Nick Marzelli. Um, He's he's a, again he's uh, gonna be a senior. He gets after it defensively more than he's just gonna be that catalyst um, leader of the of the team on the court. Um, kids are gonna see him going to lockdown. I think that that will help help me having him on the court. Um, kids are just gonna want to play hard. They, they, they see him getting after it. Then we have uh, Jacob Briggs returning starter, uh, probably a four man uh, football the uh, quarterback of the football team. Very good athlete. Uh, see him as a, a, a matchup matchup problem uh they put bigger kids on him he's a little bit quicker if they put kids on smaller he's he's pretty strong um then charlie botello um his returner he was like first or second uh player off the bench this past year uh he, he's tall probably like six four six five i know he's been in the weight room um then we got darian mcguffey uh he's also a backup guard again very athletic wants to play uh, play defense uh, and Justin Mather, the the other returner, um, that's going to be a senior as well. Again, he's a- athlete, athlete, gets after it defensively. So I just consider myself very lucky, kind of having this this group to, yeah, you to come in. So that sounds like a good problem it, to it, have. It, it, it is a, a great problem to have. Um, can n- can never have too many athletes. Yeah, uh, for sure. So now, how are you make it out in the weight room? How does that designate? How does that? Um, a line for the basketball players so right? in the summer we run a strength and conditioning program yep. um from 6 a.m to 9 a.m um i'm actually going to be running two two hours of that program so i'll know the kids that that are in there and the kids that are, say they are and they're not um so i'm going to be putting that out there like, hey let's if you're not playing a sport in the summer like let's get in the weight room All right let's, let's get in somewhere like, yeah, yeah exactly i, I get Families go go places yeah, absolutely. in the off season. They're gonna live their lives. Um, don't expect them to be there five days a week. Um, just just get in there and, and get some work done. Um, and then um, that's something I'll, I'll talk to the players with. Um, 
see how how comfortable they are it, working out yep. in, in the weight room during the season. Um, if they say, "Hey, now, coach, I don't want to like mess up with my shot," like if they're if it's something they're comfortable with, that's definitely something that that I would want to do. But you're toning; you're not building muscle, right? Exactly. right? Yeah. So that's something that kind of I'll, I'll talk. I to can them write about, you note that I'm out. Why it, too? It could be, <laughs> you could know? be beneficial. Yeah. Uh, in what, in like why not? Why? Wouldn't you want to tone your body if you're playing a a more competitive game. I mean, like you just like we just touched on the muscle mass. I could see, but if you just want to strength, uh, not over strengthen yourself. I hope I'm saying this right, but just condition yourself so you don't, you know, less injuries. You know, we all know that less right. injuries. But now you, I don't want to mess up my shot. Really, like right. I'm going to put you right. in a situation to mess up your shot. Right. I like. To, I just want to see you get. Yeah, we're not stay gonna strong. be going in there to yeah. PR lifts. Bench press, two hundred pounds. Nah, yeah. That's not. Yeah, you're not going to be taking those mu- those muscle drinks to build up body <laughs> mass. <laughs> yeah, you don't really bulk for basketball. It's more. No, you know what I'm saying? Right, I feel like, yeah. yeah, it's funny how sometimes kids will say that, and they kind of work in there. Just tell me you can't go because you want to hang out. Just tell me you want a day <laughs> off. Don't give me some excuse that you know that, what I mean. That's going to be something I stress to the kids. Just communicate yeah. communicate with me if you're exactly. not going to yeah. can't make it somewhere. Just just, right. just let me know. You want to hang out with your girlfriend? Go ahead, but just <laughs> please try to make two out of the five or three. Exactly. Let me know what you can commit to, so I know you're there. Yeah. Right. Dom, that would be a really funny excuse to get as a coach. They're like, I don't want to mess up my shot, coach. I don't want to go work out. <laughs> but they right say now. it all the time. Yeah, he might, he, he's been doing this a lot longer than we have. I mean, I did CYO, which is just four years, but he's been doing it forever and still in love with the game. Now he's the boys' varsity coach. So he heard every excuse on the book. Yeah. <laughs> heard it all. <laughs> Except uh, he ate my homework. <laughs> you, can't do this. you can't use that one. <laughs> right? <laughs> Cheapest crow. That's funny. Well, that's good that you're going to stay, try to get uh, more of a feeder system or try to work with those traveling teams right. and uh i think that's really big and yeah, that that's, should help that's you definitely out. one of the f- biggest things that that i'm gonna try to get that connection early absolutely with, with the town too bad there wasn't a coi i don't know what the closest coio league team is but we well, we all know and i mean well the aau i'm not cio aau coio is kind of dying out it's more like pickup right. ball there's yep. no really competitive to it competitive edge to it anymore you know yeah but the aau too bad is not, i don't I mean again i'm not familiar with the i know a little I bit i think of the PR. closest one is in is like mass premier in, in mansfield, mansfield uh, but this, yeah. see, this team's all over the place i coach for the mt elite ducks we're out of the isn't it shore. crazy how some of these parents will travel their kids oh, all yeah. over. i mean it's good but sometimes i think sometimes these parents need to be a little bit more realistic Focus on your kid playing the high school sport. Yeah. If they're that well in depth and that well structured, you know, a scout's going to notice that. Someone's, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. They think like in the AAU baseball, oh, my kid's going to be playing for this. My kid's going to be playing single A ball yeah. soon. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, there's not that many leagues. If every, you know, I don't know. I'm rambling. I just get a kick out of sometimes they do that. I apologize. No, you, they do sometimes. They don't travel too much. Oh but God. right before we go, coach, we're about running about out of time. I yeah. like, but I did want to mention the point that I noticed when you were talking to Dom, of course, about how many players are on your team. Having such a deep team, you're not going to have to pigeonhole players in certain roles that they're right. not supposed to play. You were talking about the JV player. He's going to be playing a three or a four if you're playing small ball. You said. Right. A lot of coaches, JV, highest score on the team, 6'2", 6'3", maybe. They put him at the 5. They play him at center. You're, he's not going to grow there. He's not going to play college basketball right. at the 5. Right. Having him at the 3 or 4, that gives him a real opportunity to grow and actually succeed past high school. That's going to be really good for him. I oh, like exactly. I don't want to put him just because, hey, you're the tallest player on the team. Like, I want you playing the position that – you're most comfortable playing not just because yeah. you're the tallest kid on the team. Like you're you're playing here, you're playing there. No, exactly. Uh, like, I, so you made a great point. If he's kind of plans on playing college, right so yeah, I did want to exactly that right. before we left because I did actually really appreciate seeing a coach actually view it from that certain point of the game. And then Dom, would you like to take us out because I think this has been a great interview so far. Yeah, absolutely, Coach. You know, for all of us at the station, A W A R A. 13:20 a.m. and all of us here at 40 Sports Talk. I want to wish you the best. Thank you very much. And, I appreciate uh, it. And hopefully we can stay in touch and you'll keep us in, keep us in mind what's going on. Of course. Yeah. Thanks uh, for coming on. Thank, yeah, thanks thank for having me. Coach. Thank you. All right, for thank everybody you. at 40 Sports Talk, we got to run. We will catch you next time. Everyone have a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. Today's 40 Sports Talk show is supported by PTU Clinic. Visit ptuclinic.com. Adria's Restaurant and Banquet Facility of East Bridgewater. For more information, their website is adriasrestaurant.net. And the Boston Athletic Academy at bostonathleticacademy.org.